I was asked before about Cython. Before there was Numba, one of the ways that was kind of Pythonic to speed up your programs was Cython. The main reason I'm introducing it to you today is not for speeding up, though, because in most cases, Numba does much better with way less work. But Cython is one of the nicest ways to create language bindings. But to do proper language bindings, we have to understand Cython a little bit. So we are going to work with it. Cython is a language that makes writing C extensions for the Python language as easy as Python itself. That's a fairly tall order that they well, inspired towards, let me put it that way. They're not quite there. Cython can be used from within the notebook. This is another extension. We had the um, line profiler extension before. Here now we load the Cython extension. So what does it do? How does it work? Here we have a simple Python function. We go over the list, and it's basically our dot product. But notice that nothing in here really requires this to be a number. I can take any type v and w that has a length, um, that has a multiplication operator, and an addition operator. That's all. This would work for strings. I could combine strings and numbers, which would make for very long strings, but it would work. There's nothing here that restricts us. We can use Cython to Cythonize it, so to basically compile it to C and then into a C extension for Python. If we do that, um, it will generate C code. But if we do it like this, then the C code won't run much faster than the Python code. Actually, it will run a little bit faster because the code does not have to be interpreted at runtime. It has already been compiled. So we save the compiler overhead. One of the nice features of Cython is that it can give you a marked up listing of your code and it gives you the color here is um, a hint at how much Python is in there. The darker the yellow, the more Python. So yellow, bad. White snow, good. Yellow snow, bad. If we look at one of these lines, we can actually click on it. We see the C code that was generated for it. And it's not particularly pretty. There's a go-to. There is a go-to. I said it's not particularly pretty. And has these pi object calls. Pi object calls usually make it yellow. Um, this part is less yellow. There's still a pi object length here, but after that it actually becomes a C loop, which is, these are just C variables. So this is just a C loop, which is fine. So if we could get rid of this um, pi object length here, we would actually have a pure C loop, which would be white. So how do we get there? We can declare types. So here, um, I declared several variables. First of all, I said, well, I don't really need this for all kinds of iterable things that have a length and a multiplication and a plus because that's probably not what I'm going to use it for. Instead, I'm saying I am going to pass um, one-dimensional arrays of integers. 
So here I'm already defining my V and W. I also said, okay, my result will be an integer, actually a long integer. And the length of my array will be an integer as well. Now, um, and I also use here the C import numpy. C import numpy actually does not exist in Python, so it's white. Um, and later, when you go through the notebook, you'll actually see that the color here became lighter. It's not quite yellow, uh, white yet, all of it, because it's still doing some Python stuff. So, um, Python, for example, checks the boundaries. Now, this is not really necessary in this code. I'm already taking the length, and I'm checking that the first array is not larger than the second. So, I know that I won't run out of bounds. So, I can skip that check by telling it Cython bounds check equal to false. Now this loop is one step closer to being white, but Python also allows wraparound. So if I take the element of an array minus one, it's actually going from the back and giving me the last element. Again, something that I'm actually not using here, so I can get rid of that as well. So I have now bounce check false, wrap around false, and now this loop will actually be pure C. Cython was actually one of the first ways to get um, OpenMP parallelism, so shared memory parallelism into Python on a threading level. Now there is the Python threading module, but Due to the gill, it doesn't do much in most cases. Who knows the gill? Ah, okay. C Python, since we actually have to set no gill equal true here, let me. The gill basically is the global interpreter lock. Yes. And it basically makes sure that Python works in a single thread. If I use the threading module, um, it doesn't do anything. It runs one thread after the other. There are exceptions. I can call functions that might release the gill. Um, for example, if I load a file, I can actually do that in a separate thread. It releases the gill, and then I actually get multi-threading in Python. So this global interpreter lock the main reason is that it makes single-threaded code a little faster. And Guido von Rossum, who is the inventor of Python and until recently the um, dictator for life, um, the benevolent dictator for life, he decided in the C Python interpreter they would use the global interpreter lock and fix basically the number of threads to one except for a few exceptions that have been shown to be faster. This is not a Python feature, but actually a feature of the C Python interpreter. There are other Python interpreters, for example, Jython based on Java or Ion Python based on C Sharp that don't have this limitation. Their threading will actually run in a multi-threaded environment. But as I just said, there are functions that can release the global interpreter lock and in that case, they can also actually run in parallel. They can do that when they don't call into the Python API. In other words, if our code turned white, we can release the global interpreter lock because we're not actually calling Python objects, and then we can run in parallel. Um, to compile that, we have to pass some options. Here, um, because it really is generating C code that is compiled to a Python extension, we actually need to tell it how. 
In the notebook, you can do it as additional arguments to the Cython magic. Usually, you don't do this in a notebook, um, then you write a setup.py file. If you have ever compiled a Python module, you might have come across a setup.py file. And it's basically yeah, a way of compiling Python extensions. And you'll see some of it in the notebook. OK, so when we do this, then we can import from Cython parallel um, the parallel and the p range. And when we use p range here and set no gil equal to true, basically it's saying turn off the global interpreter log. I know what I'm doing. We can run this in multiple threads. As I said, usually we will build these extension outside of a notebook. And here, then, we will use a setup.py file. And in the simplest case, it just looks like this. It imports from distutils and um, gives the extension module a name, tells it to Cythonize sum.pyx. PYX is the typical extension for Cython code. And if we have to pass some arguments, we can, it becomes a little more complex, but is still um, fairly straightforward. There's some more documentation in the notebook on how to do that and how to include additional include files. Cython can also deal or do classes. So not just functions can be translated into C, but we can generate classes. So here I have a simple Python class. It's just a point. Um, has an x and a y value and um, can return a representation of itself. So it's not something complicated. I can use this. This has now been compiled into a Python extension using Cython. I can then generate a point. And when I print that point, it will give the representation defined here in the function, which is just um, the values in parentheses. Now, this is a typical Python class. There are also um, a second way of defining a class within Cython, and these are the so-called extension types. Um, so here I define a function with cpdef. C is for Cython, P is for Python. So this function is accessible both from C and from within Python. And I have a cdef class here, um, which at first we would think would only be accessible from um, Cython, but that is actually not true. It is also accessible from Python. Has this special method here, C, in it. Um, and the difference between the previous class and this one is the storage. A Python class is basically using a dictionary as its base infrastructure. Here, the extension types use a struct, a C struct which is more efficient in terms of memory and also can be accessed faster. But other than that, they can be used more or less equivalently. All right. The notebook, again, has a lot of documentation for this and some exercises. So go ahead and start. <laughs> 